Good morning. I'm Pastor Wayne Carpenter for Christian Church for All Nations. I'm the worship director, and this is our morning devotional. Today, I would like to talk about the role of a lifetime. Now, do you remember the dreams you had when you were a kid? When somebody might ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Okay, well, let's see some of the cl cliche ones, and actually this really happened, are, oh, I'd like to be a firefighter, or I'd like to be a doctor, or President of the United States, or perhaps a rocket scientist. Oh, what fun it was to think about that we could be somebody really important, possibly like even a superhero to our community in our role as we grew up. Well, actors get to do this, those things in the same sort of way. They act out the roles of famous or amazing people on stage or for the screen. Oh, what fun. To dramatize the personality of a great person without having the responsibilities or challenges that that real person had to go through. Well, in Jesus Christ, we have an opportunity to engage in the role of a lifetime. In this story, Jesus is our superhero, and we are his mighty and effective team. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God. There is truly an eternity, Lord. There is truly a destiny for your people and for us individually. I thank and praise you, Lord, that that story is our testimony, and it's through our testimony, Lord, that your power can flow. I ask that you help us to be that person that you've called us to be, to help us to release ourselves from the world and enter into your kingdom. And so that, as Pastor Danielle said, that we will actually show your image through us in such a way that people can't possibly help but notice that we've been in your presence. So we thank you that it's possible in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Acts chapter 2, we have the stage set. Jesus has been resurrected and the apostles are all gathered together. Truly, I, I, no matter what they've been told, I doubt that they really are completely prepared for what's about to come. I mean, they're prepared, yes, in the sense that Jesus has discipled them and they're prepared for anything that comes, but they probably didn't quite see this coming. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing of mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with each other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now that is a scene. Now before you think that I'm being trivial with the Word of God, consider this. In Christ, we are released to be ourselves as He created us. We are called on to be responsive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. That would be our script. We are before a cloud of witnesses. We are called on to fulfill the role of being a new creature in Christ Jesus and to cast off the old nature. You see in that there are literally two different natures there. And you can see that in acting as well, is that you have the person who is who they are and the person who they are acting to be. The irony of the entire thing is we do it for real. And it has eternal consequences. Now, as we enter our new life and new role as a Christian, we are called on to be busy in the kingdom of God. The call itself is evidence that we're acting out the wishes of our Heavenly Father. Our role is to do His will, and the outcome is His responsibility. We've been set free to be childlike in our relationship with Him.
Behold, all things are new. As we grow and mature, we learn about how the power of God can operate through us. These would be the special effects. And the outcome of our story, our testimony, of what God is doing through us, and for all who take a knee to the name of Jesus, there is ultimately a happy ending. The good news is that the role we're playing is permanent. No self-interest is involved when we play the nice person on camera, then slouch back into a lifestyle of destructive appetites. No, this is real. We do engage as a person who is worthy of the part. And that's casting. So Jesus renews us. We come to the Lord. We become a new creature in Christ. We have the renewing of our mind. And we're going from glory to glory. And we continue to grow. We do make mistakes, but we continue to grow. And we confess our sins. We hand that to them. And when we do this role at the end of the day, we are better off. Because we are fulfilled that part of the gospel, that part of our role in the Lord. We don't go back to our old habits as perhaps an actor in the world would. They would be this really fantastic person on screen and then they're like, well, something else off screen. Well, we're basically, they're the same person both times. It's just that there are times we hit that mountaintop experience where we're empowered by the Holy Spirit and just things are just going fantastic and, and people are being released from their burdens and we're able to either bring them to the Lord or we're able to do other things in God that are amazing and we have those scenes if you will those Pentecost moments and those are fantastic but when it's all said and done we're the better for it we're stronger we're closer to God we are actually going from glory to glory and we will never be perfect but the Bible calls us to be pursuing that as God is perfect, to be pursuing that nature. So the purpose in me bringing all of this up, really, is that we should feel free to be cheerful in what we do. Jesus carried the burden for us. We don't have to heal, save, or deliver anybody. God will carry that for us. We're completely free to have that role of a lifetime. To be the actor in an epic tale of love and hope for mankind against all odds. Be a hero in a story where because we endured in faith until the end, the people around us that we love, that God loves, are saved from the, the disaster of living without him. It truly is the role of a lifetime. I appreciate, I think, this a little bit more these days now that we're doing the social media uh, drama ministry that we're doing, and I got to play a role as a homeless person. And for a period of time, had to take on a different persona, if you will, but it was one that would tell the story. And as you can see, I don't still have beard and things like this that I grew up for the role. And that was a, for a period of time I did that, but I learned through that experience. And I think that it's, in a way, it can be very, very, very fun to be a Christian. There's a lot of reasons for us to be joyful today. There's a lot of reasons for us to be above it all. We don't have to carry the burden, so we don't have to suffer through the burden of being altruistic or, or having so much empathy that we want to fix the world and help the world because Jesus has already done that. He's already done that part that we can't do. Now, our part certainly is to play the role that he's given us. So, I mean, in my case, I fulfill the role of an exhorter in the body of Christ. Currently, I'm worship leading. And things, but there are other roles that I take on and I've done, and certainly you are too. So I just want to encourage you to have joy in that. We don't have to carry the burden of it. We don't have to climb the corporate ladder to be where we're at in the body of Christ. 
we are who we are. God's created us to be that way, and we can enjoy that role, and we can enjoy it for the rest of our lives. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, that it's really not until we cross over and we accept your as our Savior, we confess our sins, we say, yes, we're a sinner, and we we do the Lord of our lives till we really, truly find ourselves, till we're set free from the burdens of this life, and we can look at this temporal existence and say, yeah, it's there's things we have to do, but it's not the final destination. We're just visiting here. I thank you that once we realize that, Lord, we truly do step into the role that you've called for us and we step into the way that you've created us and we can enjoy that we can appreciate that because before we couldn't we were bound in our sins and now that we are free i ask for the joy i ask for the peace i ask for the just the entire excitement lord for everybody that is listening and the people that we love and care for that we can enjoy our salvation in that way and we can just rejoice in you that you've set us free to be able to set others free. I thank you for that joy, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, have a good day in Jesus. We have um, services at 11 on Sunday, 6.30 on Wednesday night. Those are our main services. And then uh, Tuesdays with Pat at 11 a.m. Now, this Sunday will be virtual uh, coming up. Uh, So keep that in mind. Our doors will be closed to the public for this Sunday only. And then uh, we hope to uh, be reopened uh, shortly thereafter. So, uh, But we ask you to uh, enjoy our service on the broadcast on Facebook. We will be there. We hope you will be too. God bless. Have a good day.